Hello, and welcome back to The Independent Pianist. I'm your host, Cole Anderson. And today I wanted to take a break from performing again and talk about something which has been on my mind lately. It's something that's been on my mind actually for many years, ever since I became a serious piano teacher, you know, back in 2013 or so. And uh, over the past decade or so that I've been teaching regularly, it's always interesting to me to see which students make progress and which don't really make progress. And you think that would be a direct correlation between how much they work, and to a certain degree that is the case, but sometimes even students who don't necessarily work as much, they just work steadily, you know, but they actually, they make steady progress, whereas some students seem to work quite a bit, but they stall uh, quite a bit in their, in their progress. And I, I always wondered why that was. So don't get me wrong, the number one thing you do need to maintain steady progress as a pianist is regular practice with dedication and also, most importantly, intelligence. However, beyond that, there's another component which is almost as important, which and it isn't really talked about amongst pianists either, and that is the choice of repertoire. And what I realized over the past 10 years is that those students who were studying works that were appropriate for their level, maybe slightly challenging them, but for the most part, well within their capabilities, they would progress much faster, as long as they were also practicing steadily. On the other hand, students who insisted on working on pieces that were much beyond their technical or musical grasp seemed to stall and have trouble moving forward, even if they were working quite a bit. I don't know whether any of my viewers out there are piano teachers or teach other instruments, and so you might have had similar experiences, but I sometimes get students uh, particularly adults who are very fixated on learning a certain repertoire. So for example, one time I knew a student who really wanted to play the Goldberg Variations, and that's all they wanted to play. I'm sure they won't mind me talking about this because we discussed it at the time, um, but they were working on the Goldberg Variations, and it became apparent that although the easier variations were easy for them to encompass, uh, they were a bit out of their depth in the harder ones. At that time, I was rather new at teaching, so I didn't insist that they work on something else, but I did notice their progress stalling, and that's, that's probably when I should have brought up the idea of studying some simpler works. If I'd had as much experience then, I would have brought that up. So among box works, you know, I usually recommend things like the Anna Magdalena Notebook, uh, some of the inventions, some of the more approachable movements from the suites and partitas as well. So why is this the case? If you work hard enough, Shouldn't you be able to play anything you want without having to worry about the level? To an extent, this is true. Hard work will take you a long way, but if you are trying to learn pieces that are far beyond your current technical and musical grasp, no matter how hard you work, it's going to be far less efficient. So sure, if you have many years to spend pulling yourself up to the level of that hardest piece, and you don't mind kind of wasting that time to a certain degree, you'll get there eventually. Uh, so just as an example, say you want to learn the Goldberg Variations, and you've never played any easier things by Bach, or you haven't played much repertoire at all, but you're at the point where you can read music, and you can basically figure things out with the fingering and so forth. And maybe you spend five years practicing the Goldberg Variations, and by dint of unremitting toil, you finally manage to teach yourself all the notes and good fingerings, and you can more or less play that piece. It's still a little halting, there are places where you're under tempo compared to uh, professionals, so it's not exactly as good as you'd want it to be, but you can basically do it. Well, my argument would be that if you had, over those five years, instead of learning the Goldberg Variations, you had instead mastered many simpler works, many, many pieces that you could learn quickly to a very high level. So, for example, maybe you went through all of Schumann's album for the young, the Anna Magdalena Notebook, the album for the young Mozart collected by his father, things like that. And then you moved on to slightly more complicated things like Bach Inventions, simpler Mozart sonatas, and Mendelssohn songs without words, and so forth and so on. At the end of five years, if you put in the same amount of work as far as time and intelligence goes, you would be at a place where you could probably easily learn the Goldberg Variations at a much higher level, with much more ease, and much more quickly, probably only in a few months. Why would this be the case? Because you would have had all this experience playing reams of music to a very high level. You would have had so much more experience 
finding good fingerings, understanding structure and harmony in a really instinctive way, getting many common musical patterns into your fingers. So at the end of five years, you would have learned 10 times the music probably, and you would reach your goal of playing the Goldberg Variations anyway. So I make this point particularly for all of you wonderful amateur pianists out there who are looking to learn the music you really love, but who might not have developed the foundation yet to tackle the biggest pieces in the repertoire. Just keep in mind, Rome is not built in a day, and be willing to find music that is beautiful and wonderful to learn, but at the same time, realistic for where you are on your particular journey. And there's absolutely no shame in playing a piece that is at your level at that moment, even if it isn't one of the last five Beethoven sonatas or the Liszt sonata or whatever. So I'm sure many people are not going to believe me here, and I have come across students like that from time to time who will profess to really wanting to learn from me, but will immediately close their ears when I tell them that the one thing that they can do that will really speed their progress is to play some repertoire which is more approachable. And oftentimes they haven't even thought about that or even tried any of this repertoire, but they'll think that it's just too boring to bother with and they just want to go back to playing the hardest works that they really want to play now. But if you have that long vision, uh, what I've just described to you, then you'll realize how much more fulfilling it's actually going to be for you if you start with some things that you can really master to a high level quickly. And this, of course, just leads me to a little bit of an aside. You know, I just think it's amazing sometimes that people will be willing to pay me money or, you know, some, some teacher a lot of money, but then they're unwilling to follow what I have to say. And I always think to myself, you know, why are you paying me money if you're not going to trust my expertise? You're just throwing your money away. And to be honest, I can see exactly where people like this are coming from because I went through that too. That was me when I was a teenager. I wasted so much time ignoring my various teachers' advice. Uh, it's not to say I ignored it all the time. Most of the time I did what they were telling me, but just as often I didn't because I thought that I knew better. It was highly regrettable, really. I'm sure my progress would have been a lot less painful, much more fruitful earlier on. I would have had more success. I wouldn't have had to fight so much to attain certain things if I just followed all of my teacher's advice to the letter. You know, I started becoming very serious about piano when I was pretty young. I was just uh, like 12 or 13. So I guess I had some time to waste, but still it would have been better if I'd really been working at the most efficient level earlier on. And so really that's the number one thing that you can do that'll help your progress. Once you find a teacher that you really trust and you really respect and admire, you have to follow what they tell you 100% to the letter. You have to be willing to kind of make yourself into uh, a lump of clay for them to mold and just totally let go of all your ego that's telling you that you know better than this experienced teacher. And that's really the only way to make the kind of progress that's going to ap actually change you into something very different, into uh, a totally different kind of musician and pianist. Now, of course, you need to find a teacher who deserves your trust, but as long as they know what they're talking about, all they need is your complete commitment to help you advance a great deal. And I've seen it time and time again, people who are studying not necessarily with the most famous teachers, but with teachers who had a lot of practical experience. And these people just improved enormously just because they really placed their entire trust in that teacher and followed everything that they said to the smallest dot. Whereas students studying with the same teacher who might even be more talented, but who were very stubborn and insistent on their own way and would kind of argue back or think that they knew better and do different things, wouldn't improve very much at all. So really, when you are studying with a teacher, it's very important, as I said, to release any kind of ego and just be okay with being the student. It's not a competition between you and the teacher to find out who knows better. You're just trying to receive whatever, whatever wisdom there is to receive from your teacher's hands. So resist the urge to second guess and just follow their advice. If you do feel that you need to argue with your teacher, then you probably shouldn't be studying with them and that's really that. So I had to go through changing this viewpoint in my own life and that was when I really started finding enormous improvement which has been continuing to this day was just when I really put my trust in the teachers that I had. And now I've reached a point where I can really learn from myself 
completely, but up to that point, up to reaching that point, you do really need to receive whatever wisdom you can from the teachers in your life. So as I said, in my own case, I didn't follow my own advice. At a young age, I tackled pieces that I just was excited about, but that I was in no way ready for. And I could have found other things that would have excited me and that were more within my grasp at that moment, and my progress would have been a lot smoother. So just as an example, I was playing things like Valet Dobermann by Liszt or the Ballade in B minor, and I really wasn't ready for those pieces. And throughout my teens, you know, I would kind of turn my nose up or drag my feet at playing certain works that would have been really good for me. And actually, I would have found to be very enjoyable if I just put in some effort. You know, I should have been doing more Bach preludes and fugues and classical sonatas and things like that. But I didn't. I just wanted to play the fun stuff. And to a certain degree, I was able to force through because I worked a lot over many years, but I realize now that if I, if I had allowed myself to be guided more and had been more systematic about repertoire, I would have progressed so much faster and would have attained my goals a lot quicker. In the end, I had to fill in a bunch of gaps later in my 20s and even in my 30s to study more of these works that I had skipped before. And now I realize I really set myself back. I got where I wanted to be in the end, but it could have been uh, a lot less painful. So take it as a warning. Uh, don't make my mistakes. It's very important to select repertoire which is right for you at a given moment so your progress will be maximally efficient and smooth. And that's really the main job of your teacher, I think. Besides just coaching you and helping you recognize technical and musical solutions and ideas, they're there to give you pieces which are right for you and, and which will help you to grow quickly. So easier said than done, right? How do you gauge... Um, just supposing that you don't have a good teacher helping you, how do you gauge that you are playing repertoire that is appropriate for your level? And actually, it's pretty simple. Whatever you're learning, you should be able to more or less encompass the entire piece or movement in one sitting. And that just means that it should be something that's approachable enough that you can read through it a little under tempo, maybe with some parts that you can't quite play yet, but at least 90% of the right notes. So you know that you are reading accurately, you're more or less in rhythm, and it's at least fairly close to the right tempo. And if you judge that it would take you, you know, maybe a year of practice to actually be able to play the notes at tempo, at, at the kind of tempo that a professional would be using, or if by that time you would still have wrong notes or misreadings or whatever, then the piece is too hard for where you are right then. In that first sitting, you should be able to more or less play all the right notes. And of course, you can have some pieces which stretch your abilities a little bit, and some that are much easier, but always you want to make sure that you can encompass what you're attempting in a reasonable amount of time. That way you're not going to be wasting a lot of time just, you know, trying to figure out what the notes are and just try to wrap your fingers around things that you don't have enough foundation yet to really feel comfortable with. Taking this approach will also ensure that your ability to read music will improve at the same rate as your technical advancement. And that's oftentimes a problem. I have run into students who have learned, you know, learned very difficult pieces for them, uh, but they did it almost by rote. So if I showed them the music and asked them to play somewhere in the middle, they can't even start. You know, it's very hard for them to start. Uh, they didn't really know the piece intellectually or on any other way than just through rote physical movements. So, of course, you can learn things by rote in this way, but it's not the most natural approach or the most efficient. I like to think that every piece of music is kind of like a person. It has its own personality. It, ha it has its own challenges, a unique musical makeup and patterns. With every piece that you learn to a very high level, your overall ability to learn the next piece is going to increase. If you learn enough pieces to a high enough level, always gradually increasing the ceiling on difficulty, you will eventually reach a point where you can literally play anything, given a reasonable amount of time to practice. So at this point in my life, I know that I can learn almost anything to a reasonable level in a couple of weeks. Not to say that I would be ready to perform it necessarily, but I'd at least be able to play it through and have a good start on things. Of course, for the hardest pieces, you have to let them sit and marinate after having learned them before you can try to perform them for large crowds. But certainly I could perform a new piece in a more controlled environment like recording for this channel very quickly. It takes time to reach this point. You have to be willing to climb the mountain step by step. 
if you try to just helicopter to the top, you miss out on all the experience. And that's really unfortunate. Not only is it slowing down your progress, but you're just missing out on a lot of beautiful things along the way, which actually enrich your experience of music so much. So uh, thank you for watching this video. I hope this gives all you amateur music lovers out there who study an instrument some kind of insight into what you need to do to make your progress steady. This really does apply to everyone, not just to pianists. Uh, I'm sorry we didn't actually have any music this week, but I do have some good things coming up, some good analyses that I've been working on for the next few weeks, so stay tuned for those. Uh, in the meantime, please be sure to comment, like the video, subscribe, and support the channel through www.patreon.com forward slash independent pianist. Uh, you can sign up to make monthly donations there that really help me to put more focus onto this channel. Also, if you would like to study with me, just drop me a line at cole at independentpianist.com and we can talk about having a free consultation. Also, I do live performances also, so if you're interested in um, booking me for a performance, uh, you can get in touch with me that same way. I love doing recitals with a lecture component in intimate surroundings, so if you'd like to see and hear me live, uh, feel free to get in touch with me at cole at independentpianist.com. All right, thanks everyone once again, and see you next week.